Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Minista. I'm one of the orthopedic spine surgeons at Olympia Orthopedic Associates. And I'd like to spend some time with you talking about the sacroiliac joint, how it can affect people's lives and what treatment options are available to patients today. This model here shows the portion of the pelvis bone we call the ilium as it interacts with this portion of the spine known as the sacrum, hence the name sacroiliac joint. This joint has a very complex pattern of articulation that is where they join together, with some of it being ligamentous or soft tissue and some of it being cartilaginous or standard joint cartilage. The joint itself plays a major role in stabilizing the upper part of our body through our spine with the lower part of our body through our pelvis. When I see a patient in clinic that I'm concerned that their sacroiliac joint may be a portion or maybe all of the pain that they're experiencing, one of the first things I look for is how they're sitting in a chair. If I see them sitting way off to one side, I begin to think that the sacroiliac joint may be playing a role. There are five maneuvers that we do on physical exam that are very predictive if a patient has this particular disorder. We could position the body in such a way that we put some stress on that joint. And if that elicits or causes the pain that the patient has been experiencing, they can let us know. If while we perform these five maneuvers, three or more of them are positive, that is to say elicit or cause the pain that the patient was experiencing, the chances of them having sacroiliitis is actually very high. We like to confirm the diagnosis with what we call a diagnostic injection. And that is a procedure where one of my colleagues under x-ray in sterile conditions places medication into the joint itself. One of these medications is a relative of Novocaine, a numbing agent. If they come back to clinic and their diary or their history shows that they have made substantial improvement, 80, 90% relief, even if it's just short term, I consider that a very good indication that they would respond to treatment of this joint. I'm gonna start them on some basic physical therapy exercises to help relieve the tension and pressure on that joint. Many times we'll consider the use of a sacroiliac belt if their body type is one that would allow for the use of that. And then if there's no contraindication, that is to say no reason not to, we like to get people started on a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. Once they've done these interventions, we wanna follow back up and find out, did they work? How are they feeling? Is their pain reduced? Are they able to resume their normal activities? And if they are, we consider it treated and leave it at that. Most people do get better with non-surgical care, but there is a group of patients that will have persistent pain and in those cases, we do consider surgical treatment. The minimally invasive approach that I use is called the iFuse procedure. The procedure takes roughly an hour to do, and the vast majority of patients can expect to get relief. The complication rate has been studied and is very low, actually less than 3%. There have been over 100 peer-reviewed publications regarding this procedure that demonstrate its efficacy and safety. That's why I choose to do the iFuse procedure when I have patients that have sacroiliitis, refractory to conservative measures. I've had an opportunity to perform many of these procedures for the patients that I care for in our community. And it's exciting to watch people get their lives back, to be able to go on hikes, to be able to play with their grandkids, to ride their horses again. If you're watching this video, and you think you may be experiencing sacroiliac dysfunction, please come to Olympia Orthopedic Associates and allow us a chance to assess you. We would love to be part of the care team that helps to get you back in motion.